Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna talk about self-hosting N8N with Docker. It's gonna be without codes. It's gonna be step-by-step. -step. If you're not technically savvy, no worries. I'll make it as easy as possible. So by self-hosting N8N, it may actually be cheaper for you to use N8N. Uh, you may also have more data privacy. There are some other benefits. So maybe you were wondering how to set it up. Well, I'll show you exactly how to do that. So first I'll show you how to get N8N running on your own computer. Now, after that, I'll show you an alternative, which is to run N8N in the cloud, as it's called, a bit of a fancy term, but we'll talk about it later. Let's first focus on getting N8N to run on our own computer. So N8N actually has some instructions here for a Docker installation. So this is very focused around terminal commands, but that is actually not necessary. There is this program called Docker Desktop, and in here we can just click on buttons and it will actually work the same. So to get this program, you can download it from the Docker website. Okay, it's called Docker Desktop. If you go to docker.com, you'll find some button for Docker Desktop. So I'm on Mac, but if you're on Windows, uh, it should work almost the same. So go ahead and install it for your computer. So I'm on a relatively new MacBook. So it's going to be Apple Silicon. If you're on an older Mac, you may need the Intel chip. All right, so here you can see it's downloading here. And if I click on that, I can drag and drop this into applications, but I'm not going to do that because I already installed it. But if you're on Mac, you will see something similar. On Windows, you will see some kind of wizard. So go ahead and install the Docker desktop application. All right, so once you've downloaded it, make sure you open up the app so that it actually runs on your computer. Here we have containers and we have images. So the way to think about it is, a, a Docker image is basically its own uh, well package of everything that N8N needs to run. And we can find it by going to search here. And if you search for N8N, you'll see at the top here, very popular. We're going to download that onto our computer. It's called pool. So let's actually click on that. So this image will contain everything that N8N needs to run properly. And therefore it's actually quite a large uh, thing that we're downloading here. All right, so you can see it is now download it here you can see it's pretty big because it has all of that all of the things that it relies on maybe libraries everything that it needs to run now this is just the image this is not a running instance yet so if we want to create a running instance we can click on run here and we need to specify a couple of optional settings so we can give it a name although it's not necessary so let's actually just call it the first right this is the first instance i'm just going to call it first n8n so this actual instance of that image it's called a container so n8n within that container will run on port 5678 but we also want to access it on our own local host as it's called on port 5678 as well so i'll just use the same port number and here we have an option for volume so if you create workflows in n8n and also your credentials that is data and n8n needs to put that somewhere on your computer and the options that we can specify there we can actually use the same as what n8n shows here for their docker installation for their terminal commands. Okay, so this looks a bit intimidating with all these weird uh, characters, but you can see here, we see something here for the port, right, dash P, port. So internally it's running on 5678, but we also still wanna access it on localhost colon 5678, so we can also add 5678. Now here we see dash V for volume. Here we have N8N underscore data. I will use that as the volume here for host path. So that's gonna be on my own computer. So that will uh, sort of map to this address inside the container, right? So the container is like its own little world. Here we have some additional settings here. That instance of the Docker container, what time zone should it use? Right? That can actually affect your scheduling in N8N. So you probably wanna use the time zone that you're actually in. So let's say generic time zone. Now, how do you specify the value for that? Well, they actually have a, a link here. So if you click on your time zone, they will show you all of the time zones that are available, including the identifiers that you can use. So here, for example, we have a bunch of identifiers for Europe, but you'll find something similar for America or Australia or other places, right? So let me just pick Europe, Amsterdam. So I'll just add that right here. Now there is also a TZ option and that sets the system time zone. So that may also be relevant. I think it makes sense to have the same value for that. So then here they have some other options as well. The enforce settings permissions and runners enable. I'm actually not entirely sure if we are required to add these, but since they do mention it here, let's go ahead and actually add it here as well. So just paste that right there and I will set that to true and I will set the runners enabled to true as well. All right, so here now I'm gonna click on run and it will create an actual instance of the image actual running instance. So let's see what happens. All right, so here we go. We see something happening here and it shows the logs of that instance or the container. And you can see now it says 
editor is now accessible on this localhost address. My right? localhost just means your own computer basically. So I can hold command and click on this and it should actually open it up in the browser for you. Here we go. You will see some kind of setup here for an owner account, but you can see this is running on my own computer localhost. This is not available for other people. It's only you on your own computer and you can get started with N8N right here. So let me actually Try that out. All right, let's go. Let's go to next. All right, so here we have a setup wizard here. I will just skip here and skip here as well. All right, so here we go. We have the welcome page and let's say we want to create a workflow from scratch. All right, so here we are. We now have the uh, nodes here that we can set up and really create our workflow here well from scratch. Now, let's say you already had a workflow, maybe somewhere else and, and you want to use that workflow here. Do you now have to recreate all the nodes from scratch? No, luckily not. So you can say import from file. So in that other instance, you can first download it and it will give you some file on your computer. Then you can go to localhost here and you can do import from file and you pick that file and it should load the workflow exactly like you have it in the other instance. Now for credentials, I think it's a bit different. You, you probably do need to add your credentials here manually. Now let me also show you what happens when we shut it off or our computer shuts down. Uh, let's say we have some workflow. Let me actually save it here. So now if I go to personal here, you can see I have one workflow in my N8N instance. Now what happens if I shut it down? So here in the Docker desktop application in the containers, I can see all my running instances. You can see it's live right now, but if I actually stop this, so now it is stopped. And if I go back and I refresh, you can see there's nothing there. And if I start it now, let's see what happens. I start here. And if I refresh now, you can see my workflow is still here. If we go a step further, and not only uh, stop it, right? So if I stop it and actually delete the container entirely, so if I delete it here, you can see I have no containers, but I still have that image, right? So maybe later I wanna create a running instance of this again. I click on run. We have all of our settings here again. I will quickly call it second N8N, and I will use the same options that we had before. So importantly for volume, I used N8N underscore data. That's important because that data, the workflow data and the credentials, when I was using that instance, that those are stored on here on my computer. So if we just point to this again, when we create a new container, it should be able to pick up on that and use that data again. Okay, so I just have the same environment variables. Let's go ahead and run this. All right, so editor is accessible. All right, and here we go. I am back in my N8N on my own computer and I still have my workflow right here. Even though it's a different container, it was still able to use my previous data because I set the volume to the same location on my computer as before. Right, so N8N internally in that container inside its own little world is using this, but we need to sort of map that to a location on our own computer. And actually you can see that here under volumes. So if you perhaps forgot perhaps how you called it, check out the volumes tab here. If I click on that, you can even see uh, some, some uh, files here and also which containers are using that volume. Okay, but typically you, you won't be doing much with that. Here in the containers, you can also see the resources that are being used. So I'm on a pretty powerful MacBook. So for me, you can see uh, the CPU is not a problem here and the container memory usage is also not a problem. Now, if you're a bit of an older laptop and you're doing some pretty heavy workflows perhaps, or you're doing some other thing that is maybe a bit more resource intensive, then this may be something to check. All right, now what happens if N8N comes with an update? Well, here under images, you can just go here and just click on pull again. So if I do that, it will actually just pull the most uh, latest image. Now, if there is a new version, and you just download it and, it and it shows you something like a new version installed, you do need to restart the container. So in that case, you, you want to stop the container again, delete the container, you simply a new container again, right? But then you'll be using image, right? The updated image. So you just create another instance of it and make sure you use that volume so that you have the same data. And remember, if you don't know where it is, you can check out volumes here. So then you know the name. All right, so later when you actually start a new container, you may be prompted to log in. So in this case, yeah, it's really useful if you remember your credentials, right? So what happens if you forgot them? Well, in this case, I did not uh, set up email. So uh, that's why I recommended to set up email so you can actually recover password. Now in this case, um, I don't have that. So what now? Well, here um, they do mention an option to reset user management using the N8N CLI. So 
in my case, if I copy this, I can actually go to the container that is running. I actually created another container just to demo this, but I can go to exec here and here I could, I should be able to run this. So let's see what happens. All right, so here you can see successfully reset the database to default user state. So let me actually just try restarting this. I will start again. And now when I go to localhost 5678, it asks me for a new owner account. Okay, so now I have my workflow running on my own computer, right? Now, what happens if you have like a webhook or some external system needs to call into your workflow here on your computer? That can be a bit of a problem because other things on the internet cannot just make requests to your computer, right? So that would be kind of risky or like a security issue. And you may be interested in using a Cloudflare tunnel. Basically, we can route external request through the tunnel into our computer. Let me know if you're interested in this and I'll show you exactly how to set it up. But that is one downside of doing it locally on your own computer. It's a bit of a hassle to allow external requests. And there is always a security risk, I would say especially if your workflows become very complex and what if other people need to get access to it and change things it's kind of awkward having that on your own computer and what if your computer shuts down or uh, you accidentally close down your computer even though there's a workflow scheduled perhaps you actually want it to run but the computer is not powered on let's say the other downside of running it locally is simply that it may take up a lot of resources especially if you're on an older computer for example it just may not be powerful enough to really run a more complex workflow or like a high performance workload and so there are some downsides of running it locally on your own computer so instead of running it on your own computer these days we can also run it in the cloud as they call it what does it actually mean well you've probably heard of these data centers and they basically have all of these boxes boxes of electronic right so we can basically rent our little piece of compute as it's called and so our n8n instance will be running on one of those boxes of electronics right so i'm going to use a vps in that example now i've really enjoyed using hosting or for this actually they are also today's sponsor but i've had a great time using them not only for n8n also for hosting other applications and they actually have an amazing black friday sale going on as of recording so if you're watching this make sure you check out the link in the description now one thing i like about hostinger is that they already have an n8n vps template out of the box so we actually have to do very little setup to get n8n running on on a VPS and it also means that they are aware of what we're doing we're not doing something strange they are already familiar with setting up N8N on a VPS now you can also see it here self-hosted N8N so if you want to do it on a VPS make sure to check out Hostinger now they have some really good pricing right now uh, I'm going to use the KVM2 plan in this video I've had a good time using this so far and these are the resources that I get with this this is fine for a basic setup. If you are already anticipating that you will need a little bit more in terms of resources, maybe multiple workflows or bigger workflows, then feel free to check out one of these more powerful plans. However, in this video, I will use KVM2 and let me show you how to set it up as well. All right, so here on the checkout page, make sure to use my coupon code, all uppercase byte grad. If you apply that, you will get an even better price. So this is some really amazing pricing here. So make sure to check out the link in the description. So once we have that, they also have daily auto backup that can be really interesting as well. We can pick our server location. Under select operating system, there are some options here. We can pick a template actually. So actually there is an option for Docker actually, but it's, it gets even better. They have specifically a template with N8N. So Docker and N8N n8n included and actually if you search for n8n they've made it even better they actually have three options here so n8n is just a bare bones setup uh, so you get what's called an ubuntu vps with n8n but they also have n8n with 100 plus workflows already pre-installed so you've probably seen n8n has some of those really popular uh, community uh, workflows if you want those to come with the vps you can do that right here now they also have a more advanced option which they call q mode so if you have an automation agency or you you're really like a power user this can actually be super powerful because it can help improve the performance they can run the workflows through a queuing system so that's also why i like hostinger they offer some more advanced n8n options here as well now for this video I will just go with a basic N8N template. So let me just go ahead and show you what it looks like. All right, and after payment, we go through an onboarding process. Let me quickly show you how that works as well. So here we can pick a password to log into our VPS. However, just in case, make sure you use one that you will still remember. Okay, so I will click on next and 
I will just leave the default options here. I will just finish the setup. All right, so then it's gonna provision the resources. And so we just have to wait a few minutes. All right, and after a few minutes, our N8N instance here is ready to go. And if you're not familiar with VPS, no worries. We don't have to do much here. Although we have a bunch of settings here and we can uh, specify things that we wanna do on our VPS, but that is not necessary. We can just go to manage our app here. And if you do that, you will see that we have our N8N instance here. You can see it's a so-called subdomain here on our own VPS. This is the server address that we got from Hostinger. I can see that here in the dashboard as well. You can see I have some other VPSs here as well, but the one that I just purchased here uh, is this one. I can now access my N8N instance on there with this with this full address here. So again, it's a new instance. So first it will always ask us about the details for the owner account. All right, so then here we have another setup wizard. I will just skip this and here we go. So here now I can go and create my workflows. But what if you already had your workflow somewhere else, maybe locally? So let me quickly show you what you can do. So let's say here on localhost, I have my instance here. I have my workflow here. I can do downloads here. Okay, that will actually give me a so-called JSON file. Then I can come here and I can do import from file. And I just pick that file and my, my workflow appears here immediately. So this was really easy for us to set up here on a VPS. How is that possible? Well, Hostinger actually offers a Docker manager these days, which actually makes it really easy to use Docker-based applications here on their VPS. So with the, with the template, they actually bring it out of the box, but you can actually change it. So if you're a little bit tech savvy and you know uh, your way around this, this can be really uh, useful. So here we can see there are actually two containers, the actual N8N application, you could say, and there is something in front here, which helps with the actual uh, subdomain here and the routing and HTTPS. And if you click on manage here, we can even see the, ye the YAML for this. So if you are familiar with this, you can fine tune this to get exactly what you want, right? So really powerful options here. So in case you were wondering about that, and maybe you were a bit worried that it was abstracted away and that you couldn't change it, you can change it right here, including time zone, right? So time zone, right? So if you do want to make it, let's say uh, Amsterdam, I can change it right here and then I can just deploy again. All right, now what if N8N comes out with a new version? How do you update your N8N? Well, Hostinger helps you out here. So they have an article here on how to update N8N. And since it's using Docker here, it's all very straightforward. So even if you're not that tech savvy, but we can go to terminal here and they show you exactly what to type. It's just very basic commands, basically the same as what we just did uh, here in the in this graphical interface. Remember to update it. We can go to the image and pull so it will download a new version of the image. Well, it's the same in here, right? So here it would be Docker compose pull and then basically just restarting the running containers, right? So you just run these commands in here and you would get the same result as what we had previously here in the graphical in the Docker desktop application. And they even show you how to change the domain name for your N8N instance, all very well described here. And right, we have all our settings here. So make sure to check out the link in the description. In any case, hope this helps you out with self-hosting N8N. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.